Well, Jason Lingle, welcome back. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Is that, is that too much of a guard. cold open? <clears throat> no, yeah. no. Now I'm prepared. So Okay. <clears throat> well, everybody, we're testing out. I mean, it, it's to be determined whether or not this is actually going to end up on YouTube. I guess it depends on how this looks or sounds. But if you're listening to this and this is not on YouTube, uh, it means that our video trial here with the podcast, Unplugged, failed and we'll take another shot next month but anyways i am here with director of energy solutions jason lingle recurring guest he asked pretty much every month to come on the podcast so i thought i would uh (laughs) let let him on this time uh but yeah but i'll jump right into this jason so i was on twitter a little while ago which is probably a dangerous place to be right now a lot of bad news in the world but it made me think about all the positive things we have going on uh, not only just like at Blue Ridge Energy, but really for our members entirely. And one of these big things right now that's all positive is the Brighter Future Initiative. And really a big piece of that is this utility scale solar facility in Southern Caldwell County. And there's right. a lot to unpack with that. So we'll dive right into it. And I guess the first question that I've seen pop up online or something that seems to be frequently asked is like, what goes into site selection? So you're picking hmm. this site for this massive solar facility and it really is massive to get the scope of it when you're out there but um, what goes into site selection how do you get to that point where you've picked a spot to put a utility scale solar garden yeah that's a great question jacob and thanks for having me on Uh, happy to talk about this project it's something that um you know myself and a couple other folks here at blue ridge have worked on for a couple of years and so we're certainly glad to see it now out there generating electricity and and contributing to the grid and and to our overall uh, power portfolio. But um, yeah, we certainly uh, looked long and hard about doing this type of project. Um, You know, it's a a very large project for our area. It's a, a big step for Blue Ridge as we work towards our new Brighter Vision goals. And, uh, you know, we had to think long and hard and look at lots of different factors on deciding if this was something that we wanted to pursue and and actually take this take this step towards making. So, you know, as you asked, one of those questions um, on site selection was really one of the obviously an earlier question that we had to address. Um, You know, whenever we set about uh, looking to do a project of this magnitude, we, you know, had to find proper locations in our service territory. Obviously, we serve, you know, mountainous counties, uh, and then we have some foothills, but, you know, there's very little completely flat, you know, uncleared land in our service territory. Mm -hmm. Um, So we kind of looked at our overall, uh, uh, you know, again, our entire service territory for a certain criteria of pieces of land that were large enough to hold, uh, you know, a, a solar site of, of magnitude um, that was relatively flat, again, you know, uh, maybe with some hills or some light terrain, but nothing too major as far as mountains go. Uh, it had to be in close proximity to our substation. So that was a really big one because, you know, the further away you are from a substation, then the more expensive the interconnection costs would get. So, you know, we wanted it to be in really, uh, uh, really close to a substation. Um, and then, you know, uh, a site that did not take a lot of prep work and did not take a lot of clearing was something that we considered and put value to in the decision making model as well. So um, when it was all said and done, you know, we actually had identified um, around eight uh, feasible sites. And. You know, we clearly had one site that was kind of, you know, better than all of the others. And that actually ended up being the site that was chosen chosen for this project. And um, again, it, it met all the criteria, you know, checked all the boxes. It was, uh, you know, the entire site was around 60 to 65 acres. We aren't using all of that for the solar project. But, um, you know, it was a large site. It was very close to an existing substation, especially in an area that could contain that load. Um and uh, it was very rural, so you know it's it doesn't have a lot of proximity to homes. There are a couple in the area, but there's not like an apartment complex or or a lot of residential housing like right beside the project. Um, and again, it was relatively flat. It was actually an old um, kind of cow pasture uh, that a, a, a farmer owned and was looking to get out of farming, and and actually was very interested in turning it into a solar project and working with them. 
Um, and again, it did not take a lot of clearing. So, so the development costs were, were minimal compared to having to clear a bunch of trees or do a lot of grading in order to accommodate the solar project. Well, I don't want to catch you off guard with any like surprise questions or anything, but I don't think this one's really a surprise. Not like me clicking the button uh, when we started out here and click play and just start out the podcast. But uh, weather's got to be I imagine it's got to be factored into that as well. I mean, let's let's be honest. If you're familiar with Northwest North Carolina, uh, there's a lot of cloudy days in Boone, yeah. uh, West Jefferson, and those areas. Whereas down here in Caldwell County, not so much. Was that something you have to keep in play as well when you're planning this? Yeah, that's a good. That's a great question too, Jacob. And that certainly went into our decision making process. Um, um, you know. What we have, we do have some experience with our community solar gardens. And so I think that really helped us because, you know, we've had those, uh, we've had a, a very small solar, they're 100 kilowatts in size, but we've had those in each of our four counties um, uh, for, for three, four years now. And so we have that data and we can see which ones are actually, you know, they're all the same size, but we can actually see which ones are producing more electricity. Uh, during the summer months, and that certainly factored in. You know, typically, like, as you mentioned, up in up in Watauga County, because of uh, the weather conditions up there, uh, it produces less than some of our other areas. But yeah, down here in Caldwell, traditionally, um, you know, we have uh, sunnier days, especially during the summer. Um, we do have some thunderstorms that pop up down here that we may not see kind of up in the mountains because of the escarpment. Um, but you never can tell, you know, what's going to happen with those. Uh, but we definitely have, you know, the the uh, sunnier days down here, which helps with a solar project. You know, and I thought the process itself, at least from my point of view, which I wasn't directly involved in the process of building it, seemed like it moved pretty quick, especially despite the fact that it was during a pandemic. There were a lot of supply chain shortages going around right. in the world at the time. They still are. So what were some of the challenges faced during that building process? You know, were there a lot of learning moments or did it seem to go pretty much as planned? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, um, you know, we learned a lot from the project uh, just in general. Again, um, you know, not being the, you know, not being the developer, not being the construction uh, company, you know, not, not being directly involved in the construction of the project. But, you know, since we're the purchaser of the energy, you know, we had weekly calls and contacts with the developers and with the, with the builders of the project, you know, all the time. So we were in close contact with them and learned a lot from it. But, um, what I have been told by them is that the site went, uh, you know, once construction started, the site was really built very quickly. Um, with the companies that were involved in the project. And, and as you mentioned, uh, um, some of the external factors of supply chain issues, you know, they played into, into the project, you know, but it, for the most part, it was on time, uh, on budget, and um, got done relatively quickly. Just to kind of give you an idea, you know, we put out the RFP or the request for proposal back in like January of 2020. So we've just, you know, just now crossed kind of that two-year mark of, of, of working on this project. And we kind of chose the developer, um, you know, maybe, maybe like April, March or April, um, of 2020. And then, you know, it took them a long time to kind of get the plans created, get the development of the project, get the, uh, the land lease tied up. Um, but then they actually started construction. Uh, they, they contracted it out to a, a reputable solar contractor who started construction in April of 2021. So um, it basically was from April until you know, it, it for the most part, the major construction was actually done in December, but it actually didn't get commissioned until January of, of 2022. But um, still that seven months or so, uh, seven, eight months of construction, you know, in my eyes seemed to move real, uh, relatively quickly. It really did. And, and something that's kind of been a buzzword, I don't know if I really should describe it as a buzzword, but, you know, from the outside looking in at Blue Ridge or you're looking at electric co-ops and the energy industry in general, utility scale solar, you know, that that word or that terminology, how do we really describe or summarize kind of in layman's terms the size or magnitude of this facility? Because it is different than 
your average uh, solar facility that you may see out in the community. Th this is a pretty big deal. Yeah, it is. And, you know, that if you Google the term utility scale solar, you know, you'll get a very broad definition. Um, but for us, kind of, you know, what we are and why we're considering it utility scale, um, obviously, is the size. So it's, you know, it's 11 megawatts of AC power. Um, and then, again, that's you know that that's a that's a large scale as far as energy production but if you think about it in acreage and the size of the site it's around uh 55 acres um so that's the footprint that it's on is about 55 acres and you know again with it being that size uh you know that energy is flowing to our grid so it's like on a dedicated circuit it's going directly to our grid and to our members as part of our wholesale power portfolio and you know you have obviously you have sites that are that size you know all over the country or in north carolina but in our area, you know, there there aren't a ton of them again because of the terrain and um, uh, and and just uh, larger scale solar facilities finding the size is difficult as well. Um, so that's kind of what the utility scale piece of that is: is that you know it's not it's going to our members through the grid and through our um, uh, wholesale power portfolio that they're buying. Um, and so it differentiates from our community solar, which are much smaller arrays on smaller footprints. And then our members can actually like buy into those programs or participate in those programs, um, which as of right now, the utility scale solar or the brighter future solar project is not set up for, for that type of kilowatt hour allocation. Jason, something that is really key with this project is it's a huge part of our brighter future vision, which is something uh, we've really been rolling out. We're excited about. Do you want to touch on how that fits into that whole vision and that whole idea? Yeah, absolutely, Jacob. The brighter future vision was something that we adopted as our own vision, um, you know, a little over a year ago. Uh, it's something that we strongly believe in as we move forward. Um, it's, it's centered on basically three pillars. Um, you've got communi community and member enrichment, you've got a low carbon, and you've also got like innovation, reliability, and cost. And we're trying to balance all of those things. But really it comes down to being able to providing, you know, reliable electricity, affordable electricity, and sustainable electricity for our members. So again, as part of this project, we named it the Brighter Future Solar uh, Project. You know, it, it aligns nicely with our Brighter Future vision. And a big part of that is low cost because you want that sustainable energy, you want that reliable energy, but you don't want cost to be, you know, at the mercy of that as well. So that was something that was really important in this project. And uh, I know demand reduction has been talked about with this. So you kind of explain that part as well. Yeah, for sure. The, you know, as you mentioned, you know, you can have, um, uh, all the sustainability in the world, but more than likely that's going to drive the cost up. You know, you can have very reliable electricity, but that's probably going to drive the cost up. So we're trying to balance all three of those, as you mentioned, affordability, reliability, and sustainability. And this project, again, we wanted to be sure met all three of those criteria. So with this project, we're actually able to buy, you know, the energy. We signed a 25 year, uh, it's a power purchase agreement with the developer. And so that enables us to lock in pricing for today at a price that's very comparable to our other wholesale power uh, that we're purchasing already. And uh, as you mentioned, the peak demand savings, we're able to achieve savings on this project every year, which is going to come off of the overall whole, uh, wholesale power uh, that we're purchasing, because during those peak periods of the of the day or of the year, uh, which are typically during the summer months, you know, uh, uh, between 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. when it's the hottest temperatures, um, you know, in Instead of instead of uh, providing more expensive power during that time, uh, we're actually just able to you know have some of that already on our system from this solar project. So that's where we're actually going to save our members money um, off of our wholesale power costs by being able to provide some of that peak power locally. As we wrap up this episode, I just want to say thank you for tuning in to our first filmed episode of the Unplugged podcast. We had Director of Energy Solutions Jason Lingle on today. We talked about a whole bunch of stuff in the Brighter Future Initiative, including our utility scale solar facility. If you're interested in that or you want to learn more, head to blueridgeenergy.com forward slash brighter future. And if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button so we can bring more of this content to you in the future.